Well, welcome to the Middlesex Moments Radio Show. I'm Dr. Anna Wasesha, President of Middlesex Community College, and joining me today are Kim Hogan. Kim is the Director of Finance and Administrative Services here at Middlesex, and Jill Duvall, who's the Communications Director at our local United Way, the Middlesex United Way. I asked them if they would uh, come and meet with me because I'm so intrigued by the idea of the power of the purse. So we're going to be talking about that uh, in a moment. But first, I, we need to talk a little bit about what the context for Power of the Purse is, and that's the Women's Initiative. So do you want to uh, tell us a little bit about what that is? Absolutely. Um, <clears throat> excuse me. The Women's Initiative uh, at Middlesex United Way is part of a much larger movement of women across the country at local United Ways that are uniting to create change in their local communities. And our Women's Initiative is about five years old here and comprises women volunteers and professionals who have reached a point in their life where they want to sort of turn outward and give back to their community. And the power of the purse, which is sort of a play on words, uh, but that's actually our annual fundraising event, which is coming up in June. So what kinds of things have you done in the last five years? Well, it's um, been a great group of women who have, they have a passion for volunteering. We've made a lot of great strides. One of the wonderful programs that we've had, thanks to you folks here at Middlesex Community College, is we host an annual free financial literacy workshop and we invite the community at large to attend it. And it's uh, co-sponsored as well by Liberty Bank. One of our members actually runs the financial literacy workshop and that's one of our focus areas is financial stability. So that's that's one thing that we've done. And I don't know, Kim, if you can share some other sure. successes. Um, we've done a lot of things with uh, trying to promote leadership uh, amongst young women. We did. We partnered with the Girl Scouts for um, an anti-bullying campaign that they did. Mm. Um, very, very important in our community that we um, support these kinds of efforts. We also did things such as a diaper drive. We helped with the United Way diaper drive. We've done um, book drives for... Uh, single moms that are coming in to promote literacy. Um, a lot of non-English speaking members of our community receive these books because they're learning to read and then what better gift to be able to read to their children. Um, and it just, it's a wonderful, wonderful partnership that we do. It's so rewarding yeah, it's to, so um, to, yeah. to have that in our community. Yeah, I, I'm happy to hear about the diaper drive. That was one of the first things people told me about when I arrived in Middletown last summer was that you do this. And um, it, it's been a while since I've had to buy diapers. <laughs> but I do remember becoming uh, just a semi-manic clipper of coupons because they're so expensive. Right. And yet it's obviously you need to have clean diapers on your child right. all the time. One of the very interesting things that we do is a... Um, a a networking breakfast every uh, every other month now um, and that's done by having someone from the community who either is a women-owned business or running a business um, comes in and talks to people um, over breakfast a very short one-hour event uh, it's been really widely attended uh, we charge ten dollars well, actually it's a suggested donation okay. of five dollars five dollars okay. so it's all the more affordable and right. definitely and that's also thanks to a wonderful community collaboration our friends over at water's edge uh, center for health and rehabilitation laura fault over there uh, provides the space and breakfast for free to our group oh. um, so we're allowed to uh, to have our breakfasts there and make a little money to support our work at the same time right. fantastic well so we got to take a break which is part of the problem with a radio program because we have to go away and uh, some other messages will come on and we'll come back and uh, let's talk about the power of the purse so we can get people interested in attending Welcome back to Middlesex Moment. Uh, today I'm talking with Kim Hogan from Middlesex Community College and Jill Duvall, who's the Communications Director at Middlesex United Way. The reason that I would hope that they would be able to come over here, and I'm so glad the two of you did, is that uh, I thought that everyone in this community ought to know about the power of the purse because that is the coolest thing I have just heard about since I arrived here in Connecticut. So tell me everything. You can start anywhere, like how did this whole idea start, or what was it like last year, or even, you know, we got to cover what's it going to be like this year. Definitely. And when it's, well, it's going to be fun, definitely. Yeah. Yeah. That's the first thing. It's yeah. fun, fun, fun. You know, one great thing about United Way is that it's a, a worldwide movement, and mm. we share best practices with each other. And we're one of 130 women's groups at various United Ways across the country with more than 50,000 members. And collectively, we've actually raised uh, more than $830 million oh. over the past <laughs> decade. That's 
which is Something. impressive. Yes, that's yeah. right. Um, with all with that movement comes the opportunity to share best practices, and so the power of the purse is something that a, another United Ways women's group did, and we right. thought this is a great idea. Let's bring it to Middlesex County, and it's uh, this year is our fourth year, and it just keeps growing and growing every year, mm-hmm. uh, and we hope it continues to grow this year. It's on Thursday, June twenty eighth, at Bocce Grill in Cromwell, and it's twenty five dollars a person. Um, which is very reasonable and features a unique and we think wonderful silent auction. Right. I don't know, Kim, you want yeah, to? Yeah, sure. Play on the words is, is exactly what it is, Play, you know, the power of the purse. And when you think about purses themselves, women carry their entire lives in their purse. So it's such a great support from the idea that we are a women's group and then we have this power of the purse event. So what happens, you know, yes, you pay $25 to come, but you do get you know, a, a wonderful hors d'oeuvre spread and, of course, a cash bar, but a chance to have a little wine and relax after a nice long day at work. So people come in and they network instantly, start having a great time, and then they walk around these tables of these fabulous purses they get put together. And that's really the most exciting part, is to look and to see how creative people can be about a purse. Um, and also keeping in mind that there may be some men that want to come, so we also have purses for men. They may be called a cooler, but we call them purses on that day. <laughs> so everything can range from these themes that get put, uh, items that get put into the purses. For example, um, one of the things that I do is bring a golf purse. I'm an avid golfer. I love to golf. And each year I solicit um, you know, some tickets, rounds of golf uh, from a local golf community, which is Lyman Orchards. And then I add things to the bag. So when you, pur- when you purchase that purse, or when you bid on that purse, I should say, you would be getting a round of golf plus many uh, add-on items, tees, balls, fun stuff. And it all gets stuffed into a purse and gets put on display. Is the purse a special kind of purse? or is It a, It could be anything. anything. I haven't decided what this year's purse is going to be. but um, <laughs> yeah. it's, it's usually something special. It's either something that relates to what's inside, mm-hmm. or other times I just pick the brightest green purse that I could find and put all the stuff into that to kind of call attention to it. But this year I'm thinking more of um, a, perhaps a golf cooler. They mm. have this new golf cooler out that I'm thinking about getting. Um, another example of things that have been done is a night at the movies, where um, you know for lower um, lower bid- bidders, mm-hmm. something that they can bid on, where you get um, just into movie tickets and candy or things that you would bring to the to the mm-hmm. theater. And you would you would think that it wouldn't be that popular, but it's actually one of our more popular items to bid on. I think the season then, you're right on with the season yeah. too, because everybody loves the movies in the summer. Sure, sure. Yeah. And then we have really spectacular ones that have um, show tickets and dinner out tickets and winery, um, wine, wine tastings. It's, uh, People get incredibly creative yeah. with these purses, and they range from very high-end designer purses. Coaches. Coach and, and Dooney and & Burke and Michael Kors. Um, someone just dropped off a coach bag yesterday, as a matter of fantastic. fact. Yeah, gorgeous. Last year, I, I won the Michael Kors purse, oh. and it was it was all a blue theme. The purse was blue, and it had a DVD of, actually, I think it had a Blu-ray of Blue Heaven, the movie Blue Heaven, and a blue scarf in it. Um, and then we have some more reasonably priced purses, um, but it's handbags, tote bags, gym bags, coolers, as Kim was saying. Yeah. Um, any type of carry-all you can imagine. Beach themes and yeah. it's it's just ranged and ranged and ranged from all different um, all different things. Even for us, you can tell we're excited about yeah. it. So we're actually yeah. see what, what our colleagues are going to bring and what others mm-hmm. will donate. And it, it's amazing how the community comes together over something like this. Yeah. It really really works. I love it. So how many purses in the end do you think you might end up with? What's your goal this year? We usually have about thirty five items. That's a lot. Thirty five purses. Mm-hmm. Yeah. 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 And it's, you know, it's not just the purse. The purse in and of itself is usually a draw, but it's what's inside as well. Um, We have a lot of gift cards to local restaurants, tickets to shows. Comcast is always generous, and they donate tickets to a concert at the Comcast Theater, um, jewelry. And like Kim was saying, we have some items that are appealing to men, and men are definitely welcome to attend as well. Um, golf or sports related mm-hmm. items. We usually have tickets to baseball games, that sort of thing. So there, there is something for everyone. Brief, we've had briefcases and laptop cases um, filled with with items as well. And you, when you start to think about yeah. it, you know, you right. really can get very creative yeah. with it. Um, the other it. thing that's interesting, Anne, is that it really encompasses the whole county. We're Middlesex County. And, and it's amazing the Shoreline folks really come up and they and they participate in this event and they donate. So it, it also br- branches us out to get people 
away from this, the nucleus of Middletown to go out and experience mm -hmm. Westbrook and, and other um, shoreline communities, Old Saybrook and such. Mm -hmm. So it kind of fits, you know, that bill as well. That's yep. wonderful. Yep. So, and how do you get a ticket? Do I do what I call your? You buy it for me. I buy it. <laughs> so people should come call to Kim Hogan. Community <laughs> College. Yes, and look up Kim. Um, I only say that because each committee member is asked to sell a certain amount. Oh, all right. <laughs> so okay. that's one of the things that we do as as members. We try to make sure that we get out there, and it really forces us to. Um, to meet our community. Well, that's a great so. way to network, and then yes. and then you get to but bring other, there are other but ways other to buy. other people. <laughs> <laughs> Anybody listening <laughs> um, can call United Way at eight six zero three four six eight six nine five, or you can visit our website at middlesexunitedway.org slash wi. And can you buy your tickets online then? Uh, you can buy them online. Oh, yes, that's with a wonderful. credit card. Yeah, yeah perfect. Yeah, or you can mail your check to United Way. Perfect. Uh, yeah. It's easier if you purchase the tickets in advance and you get kind of a streamlined registration when you get there. Oh, but you could actually show up you the night of the event. You could buy them at the door, too. Okay, but of course you want people to come in ahead of time and so you can plan, too. So we'll also, um, we'll set up actual bidding packages. You know, it's a whole auction package. Um, so when you walk in, what to expect would be, you know, you're, you're meet, you meet the um, individuals at the registration desk and you're handed a packet and that gives you a number in which you bid on your number so that I'm not outbidding Jill, I'm outbidding number two. You know, so you don't get this, uh, it's, it's really fun. Although yeah. that happens a little bit too. We I figure out each that. other's numbers. numbers. <laughs> yeah, yeah. But in that, I think silent auctions are so much fun just in general. But yeah, often if you have to sign your name in, you know, you know what, you know, what you're doing to your best friend. Yeah, is going it's easier in. to just put a number down yeah, quickly. Exactly. Yeah. So the, the more that sign up earlier, the better the registration process goes. So we really do encourage that. Okay. So I think everybody should call the United Way right now. Yes. <laughs> don't, don't listen to the rest of this radio program. Just get on the phone and call them <laughs> or look them up online. So, all right. So we're going to have to take a break. Uh, and, you know, when I, we come back, what I want to ask you is what are the issues of the, you know, what are the, let's say, most significant issues that women, conf not younger women, but the, the People who are adults, the women adult, is that, is, can we call them adult women? Sure. Yeah. Because um, as a newcomer to the community, it's, it's a little hard for me to decode what I see. But I imagine that, especially through the work of this committee, you know, you think long and hard about where you could really make a difference. And so let's, let's just deal with those issues a little bit. We all need to understand that um, we're, you know, kind of a sisterhood in a way, and, yes. th and it's so important to support our sisters um, to have meaningful, happy lives. So we'll be right back after this message. Well, welcome back to Middlesex Moments. This is Anna Wasesha. I'm the president here at the college, and today I'm talking with Kim Hogan and Jill Duvall, and we've been expressing our complete joy about the idea of the Power of the Purse event, which is happening on June 28th at the Bocce Grill in Cromwell. And you can, as we said earlier, you can hang up the, you can turn off the radio right now, although I don't think that WMRD would like to hear that, or WLIS. But let's say, let's say you wait until the end of the program and then go to your computer or your phone and, and uh, get a ticket to this event. I'm going to be there, and I'd love to meet you there, so come and uh, uh, bid on these purses. Uh, but, you know, all of this is in the, the larger embrace of issues that uh, adult women uh, face in our communities. And uh, I've certainly spent uh, time in my life trying to uh, trying to help my sisters, my, especially the older women in my life, um, make their way uh, toward or stay within a happy uh, and healthy and robust uh, life. And, uh, and we confront challenges all the time. And so uh, over the break we were talking about some of the early childhood programs and some of those I think are aimed at the new American mothers who uh, have, are newcomers to the community, as am I. Uh, and, uh, there are different initiatives that the Women's Committee has uh, endeavored to uh, implement that will make a difference in the lives of both of those women and their children. So incredibly important. And then there's also the, an, an empowering young women piece, which I think is, an, again, a great way to help young women realize that we're all in this together and uh, we need to help those who are coming up behind us, but also those who've led the way. It's a huge issue, too, with young women these days. and the terrible self-images that they have of themselves. And um, one program uh, Kim alluded to earlier, that we f a program we funded at the Girl Scouts called Girls Rule, um, it's an anti-bullying program for middle school aged girls and it even starts younger than that. Right. You know, and it's a very unique type of bullying and it's girls 
you know, bullying other girls. And it's just so unfortunate because we have an opportunity to truly support each other and be a sisterhood and empower each other, lift each other up, help each other succeed in life. Mm -hmm. um, and that's why we wanted to fund a program like that through the Women's Initiative to, to help empower young women and, you know, increase their chances of success and, and helping, you know, the next generation of women. Exactly, exactly. So, I mean, why, why do you suppose that bullying has become such a big problem? Social media makes it very easy to do that. Um, you know, you're no longer face to face. Um, you say things that maybe you wouldn't think about saying, but yet you type them or you text them into to a friend, and it and it just goes from there, and it and it goes faster than fast. Um, and it it happens. It doesn't. Sometimes it's not even intentional. Um, but again, it it's it's something that's in our society right now. Um, we've seen it all around. But it's it's just one of the things that we have done. We've mm -hmm. done a lot of very very different things um, as they get presented to us. For example, we do have a funding committee um, that, s that receives grant applications um, for things that maybe aren't, um, aren't very large dollar needs. Okay? And, and for an example, um, one of the things that we have done is, is given, um, I believe it was $500, uh, to start up a, um, a business that was starting out for a, like a battered women's kind of shelter, mm -hmm. um, where you know she came to us with has a great concept, great idea, and just needed that little bit of seed money to get started, and wow, it's 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 really working. Um, so we have these wonderful stories that have just been embedded over our years in this endeavor in the women's initiative. Um, but the, some of the things that we that we do routinely, we, they're they're like the financial literacy that Jill talked about earlier. Um, it's it's really just touching people where they are, bringing them to a sense of sisterhood that you mentioned. Mm -hmm. Um, and making sure that uh, we're really focusing on women and that that need for a community and sense of belonging. You know, we get we get so enthralled with this idea of a sisterhood, mm -hmm. you know, and it really does work. So we've seen our our work through whether it's monetary donations, through our initiatives um, of the power of the purse, or we even did a um, break. What was, what was that? Oh, what was that? Going? Um, the walk thing at the, at the school where they went for exercise. I don't know what the you're talking about. <laughs> I can't think of it. We just did it last year. We have we have our sponsored one spot. Is it the did kind we? where they give you exercises like every 400 meters oh, or something? Oh, the Born Learning the Trail. Yes, yeah, the Born Learning oh, Trail. Oh, okay. So that's okay. another thing. Yes, we should yeah. Yeah. Because that, that yeah. was really interesting because now <laughs> we can talk about the physical being. <laughs> right, and then, right. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, so... Yeah, just start where you okay. want. Um, so one of the other things that we did was to promote physical awareness and physical abilities through the, um, I can't think of it, Jill. <laughs> it's uh, Born Learning Trail. And Middlesex United Way has, in the past year and a half or so, installed 11 Born Learning Trails throughout the county. And it, what it is is a series of fun and physical activities for parents and caregivers to do with their children. And our goal is to get one in every single town in Middlesex County, so we're almost there, or 11 out of 15 towns so far. And the Women's Initiative sponsored um, installing one of these trails, and our trail happens to be in Haddam Killingworth. And what does it look region. like? It's, you know, I compare it to almost like a jogging trail when you're going along jogging and you, there's a sign that says to stop and do some stretches, mm -hmm. something like that. Instead, it's signs encouraging parents and caregivers to engage their children in some way, like find something blue around you or look at the sky and the clouds and what shapes do you see in the clouds. Um, there are also stencils on the ground of shapes and colors, letters and numbers, um, to, so kids can uh, read the, the letters. They'll read the letter A and say, okay, let's think of as many things as we can that begin with the letter A. And it's, it's just a, a wonderful early learning tool, and it definitely fell into the women's initiatives focus areas, and we're, we're very passionate about getting kids off on the right foot. And so the trail uh, was a no-brainer for us to sponsor. It actually costs about $1,500 to install one, and it takes some volunteer manpower as well. Um, but it's just a beautiful tool. So if uh, you have one in your local community, you can go on the United Way website, actually, and find a, a list of where they're all located. In Hopefully there's one in your town or will be very soon. Are they all the same, each one? They are. And it's, so it must be a company that has developed this. It's, you know... Uh, 
born learning is an overall, it's a, <laughs> I'm trying to think what to call it, sorry. It's a can- an awareness campaign, mm. I would say. And it's sponsored by United Way Worldwide and the Ad Council. And so we literally purchase it through the United Way. Ah, they good. provide the kit, it's called, mm-hmm. a kit. And we worked uh, with Lowe's last fall, and they put the posts and signs together for us, and we mobilized volunteers to get these installed in uh, as many towns as we could. And like I said, we're, we're going to get to all 15 soon enough. And uh, It's a perfect campaign because... Right. Yeah. Um, because it engages the imagination, and it gets, it, and it, obviously mm-hmm. people are outdoors if they're going to if they're going to see the signs. So they're getting some, they're getting active, which is that yeah. in a way it's kind of like Michelle Obama's just move, right. just just get out there and move. Absolutely. And but the other the other component of this is let's communicate too. You're not only are you moving, but you're out there, and it's really encouraging the parent to talk to the child, mm-hmm. and it bridges that um, even at a young age. Because if you start those conversations in the foundation, and get used to doing that with your with your child, it really does enhance as they go through. Um, you know, adolescence. Well, and it, and it, I think it relates directly to what we were talking about earlier with bullying, mm-hmm. and and how so much exactly. of that is driven by you know the media and um, and Facebook and those sorts of things, and this is is trying to bring us back to just human interaction, right. which I maybe is you know kind of on the decline right. as the others ascend. Um, to speak about this in another spectrum, when mm-hmm. we talk about this interaction, we one of the other things that our group has done is reached out to homebound seniors that really can't get out and do their own shopping and um, it, they work together with us um, with St. Luke's um, in an initiative at the holidays to bring gift baskets to these and our currently two individuals um, that we've been kind of following. Um, we provide things like stamps and letters, you know, letterhead that they can write on. Um, they can read books, maybe large print books collect toiletries and creams and you know just nice things that maybe they wouldn't be able to buy for themselves mm-hmm. or and receive a gift that comes from you know someplace where they wouldn't expect it um, and it's just it's very rewarding I know Jill you've gone to to the house to to bring this basket maybe you could talk more yeah I visit with her uh, she happens to live in my town which is great and you know I've met now I have a new friend in the town where I live and I deliver this wonderful basket with items donated from our members, and she's over the moon about it. She's so happy, and we sit there and we chat for a little while. And she's, because she doesn't get out much, she's an avid gamer. So she actually is all into the video games. Seriously? Seriously. Oh, my heavens. (laughs) I would never have expected that. stacks of video games, and she could probably take on my nephews, I think. Wow, wow. Well, wow, and she's so thrilled to have that connection to a group of women, mm-hmm. and it's always eye-opening for me to sit there and chat with her and ask her a lot of questions. I'm one of those people I like to ask folks questions and you know learn from those around me, and uh, so I usually sit there and absorb, you know, what she can share about her life. And she's a sweetheart, and she sends us little notes all year long <laughs> wonderful and and I mean I think all of us can try to to think I think about the elders who live in the communities where we live um right. this morning I was reading in the paper about hurricane season also something totally new to me coming from the midwest tornadoes yes but not hurricanes <laughs> uh and uh, I think they were predicting eight to eight plus torn, uh, hurricanes that would come through and I and my you know one of my first introductions to living here was last August when I re- was it Irene. Irene came through. There was Irene through and, and then Alfred. And we went without power. And mm-hmm. uh, I think you know, as we consider the people who we know in our neighborhoods, or if we live in apartment buildings on our floors, who maybe you know would be very, very lost without their power. Um, it, you know, it's good to reach out to them. I I always uh, back in, in my home uh, neighborhood in St. Paul, we did a block uh, telephone directory once a year at Christmas time, so we knew who lived in each house and what their phone numbers were. Because these days it's all cell phones, but uh, there were, you know, there were, they're certainly here. I haven't had a chance to meet all the neighbors in my community. I don't know their names, and I think that's just it's good for safety and mm-hmm. uh, and, it, and it promotes your health in a way because people can help you and you can help them when they they need it. So we have to wind down here, and I was thinking about. Uh, how we might close off this program. First of all, I want to just say again, The Power of the Purse is an event that not to be missed, and I hope everybody will attend. So the place is so crowded that there'll be a line out the door. 
Uh, to find out more, uh, visit the Women's Initiatives website at middlesexunitedway.org slash WI, or you can join our group on LinkedIn. Just look for Middlesex United Way Women's Initiative and join our group on LinkedIn. So thanks, both of you, so much for Thank coming you. here today. And I want to also mention that uh, if uh, our listeners are interested in learning more about Middlesex Community College, we have a fantastic website at www.mxcc.edu. Uh, and the United Way itself has a, its own website, and that is? MiddlesexUnitedWay.org. This has been Middlesex Moments, and I'm Anna Wasasha, president of the college at Middlesex Community College. I'm wishing you all a good day.